Hey, Previews World, Troy Jeffrey Allen here at San Diego Comic-Con, and I'm sitting right next to C.B. Sobolski. So, of course, he's the editor-in-chief of Marvel Comics. How's it going, everybody? And uh, how's San Diego going for you? It's going well so far. You know, yeah. it's, uh, it's getting bigger and bigger every year, mm -hmm. and it's my first year as editor-in-chief here, so it's extra special and extra busy. Yeah, yeah, I bet. <laughs> so, you guys have a lot of announcements. I've been seeing all yeah. of them coming down the pipeline. Mm -hmm. You guys had a string of anniversary issues just recently, like yeah. a bunch of books hit like milestones. Yep. But I want to talk to you a little bit about the future of Marvel okay. and what's coming down the pipe. Mm -hmm. Like what, I, I know of course you're excited about everything, right? Of course. But like, uh, can we just start with uh, spider getting, for example? Sure. What can we expect from that? What are like, you know, what, what shakeups are going to happen for the Spider-Man universe that you can tell us about? Yep. Um, like, yeah, let's talk a little bit about spider getting. Sure. You know, um, Whenever we're plotting the future at Marvel, we never disrespect the past because there's always a balance between the new readers and the older fans, I mean, like ourselves. Like ourselves, there. yes. So Spider Geddon is the same way. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it's bringing back everything that people love about Spider-Man, including every single character that people love about Spider-Man yes. mm -hmm. into the universe. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, we've done different Spider-Man events before, mm -hmm. and uh, a lot of times they've taken the spider characters in different places to different dimensions. And uh, in the last Spider-Man event, all the characters kind of went out into the different spider dimensions. And this time, for Spider-Geddon, they're all coming back. Oh, okay. And I think any spider character that anybody has loved, alive or dead, mm -hmm. uh, will be seen in Spider-Geddon. Oh, whoa. Yeah. Okay. All so, right. And of course, Peter's going to be the main driving force. Right. And the other big thing about this series is it will also feature the uh, in-continuity debut of the Spider-Man from the PlayStation 4 uh, video game oh, that's going to okay. be coming out in September. Okay, cool. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so like now let's switch to the other side of the universe. Actually, there's multiple sides of this universe. <laughs> but uh, I saw the solicitation for X-Men Black. Yep. Magneto's featured prominently. Yes. So this isn't going to be like your typical X-Men team, is it? No, it's not going to be a typical X-Men mm -hmm. team. You know, X-Men Black is uh, something we've been planning for quite a while. You know, uh, I'm a huge X-Men fan. They're my team. That's my, that's my, those are my characters. You mm -hmm. know, I grew up on X-Men. And when I take, took over as editor-in-chief, it was something I really wanted to put a focus on. Mm -hmm. uh, so we created this idea for the X-Men Black. Yeah. Uh, like the uh, title entails, what people might you know intuit, it is about some of the villains in the Marvel Universe. We've seen covers with Magneto. Mm -hmm. uh, Emma Frost is going to be in there. Mystique is going to be in there. Juggernaut's going to be in there. Yeah. So it's going to be an interesting cast of characters. Mm -hmm. uh, I can't talk about the creative teams just yet. Okay. But uh, J. Scott Campbell is doing all the covers. They've yeah. been phenomenal. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the design work that he's putting into them is great. I mean, he's a big X-Men fan like us, so we knew he'd be perfect for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, it takes some X-Men, uh, these X-Men, if you want to call them X-Men, the, the, the vi are usually known as villains, yeah. uh, on an interesting adventure through their own histories. Uh, and examining kind of like Marvel, many comics do there's not black and white there's not good and evil there's always that gray right and yeah. especially in the X-Men universe there's always a lot of gray mm -hmm. so we're gonna explore the gray and what it takes to turn a hero from the light to the dark from right. the white to the X-Men black so okay. to speak <laughs> yeah villainy's kind of fluid in the X-Men universe yeah, right exactly. so <laughs> I'm looking forward to it um, also speaking of uh, X-Men black we have the Black Panther sister. Yes. Shuri. She's Shuri. getting her own book. Yes. Um, like, can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. You know, Shuri was the breakout character of the Black Panther For movie. Sure. I mean, that yeah, movie yeah. was just phenomenal. The way mm -hmm. that it built Wakanda and its culture and the, the, the history of the Panther and his family was just amazing. Yeah. And, you know, the Marvel Universe and the Marvel Cinematic Universe, they're kind of symbiotic. You know, mm -hmm. we they're influenced by us and we're influenced by them. Mm -hmm. So once we saw the response that they got to Shuri, we knew we had to do a book. Yeah. Uh, and it's written by Nettie Okafor with art by Leah Romero. Mm -hmm. uh, the covers are going to be by the amazing Sam Spratt. And uh, this is going to kind of uh, ride the line between how we saw her in the movies okay. as, you know, the kind of the cue, you know, the tech character right. that was, you know, helping out her brother, the kind of technological genius, uh, with what has been established in the uh, Marvel Universe mm -hmm. by uh, Ta-Nehisi Coates and Roxane Gay right. in terms of her role as kind of the keeper of all the Wakandan secrets. Right. Yeah. So it's 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 almost a study of, you know, what is myth and mythology and what is mechanical. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I love that. That's yeah. great. Uh, so all right, then we also got we have the big event book. Yes. Well, I guess are we calling we shouldn't call it an event uh, book. Yeah, it's, it, this is the big one. This, this is, is the, the big one. This is the big event. It's something you know? to look forward to. We, this one is so big it had an infinity countdown leading up to right. it. <laughs> so we have Infinity War. Wars, yep. And on top of that there's Infinity Warp, which is gonna be like a I want to call it like, I, like I'm old school, so I'm going to say like the Age of Apocalypse type thing yep. where it's mm -hmm. like, yep. you know, we're going to deviate and kind of like mess with the timeline a exactly. little bit and show you some really crazy things. Mm -hmm. But can you talk a little bit more about that too? Yeah, you know, Infinity Wars is something that we've been building for a while. Mm -hmm. um, you know, th those characters are so beloved by so many people from what Jim Starlin did in the 70s and 80s to where we are now. And Jerry Duggan, 
uh, is doing something completely different with them. There's a huge surprise that happens in uh, Infinity Wars Prime, mm -hmm. uh, which is going to be in shops in a couple weeks. Mm -hmm. And uh, that introduces a new character, Requiem, who is seeking the Infinity Gems, much along the lines as Thanos has been. Okay. But uh, that character's uh, motivations might be a little bit different than what Thanos's were. Interesting. Okay. Uh, and it's going to involve not just the cosmic characters, but it's the entire cast of Marvel Universe characters. Mm -hmm. So we've seen many different characters have different gems. Turk from the Daredevil Universe, to Captain Marvel, to Doctor Strange. So this is a Marvel Universe-wide uh, event. And uh, it's going to start in space, come back to Earth, and then take us to some unexpected places. Okay. And those unexpected places are where the Infinity Warps characters are going to come from. Ghost Panther, Arachnite, Soldier Supreme, Iron Hammer. Mm -hmm. And it was just a fun way for us to create new characters by taking two different versions of characters and mashing them up. Right. And, you know, Umberto Ramos has been doing a lot of the designs. Right. They've been coming out phenomenally well. Mm -hmm. And just the, let the writers go out and have some fun, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, the Infinity Warps characters are going to be set in a world on their own. It feels very naturally in the story as we get to it. Right. People are going to be very surprised how we get there. And then they're going, oh, that makes complete sense. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's just... It's having fun like when, you know, you were a kid with action figures or model kits. You could take parts or pieces from different ones and right. kind of build these new characters. <laughs> that's kind of what we're doing. And that's what we really want to do now is just start having fun with the books yeah. again. Yeah, yeah. You know, sometimes things get a little bit overly serious and there's some doom and gloom. And, but this is like, you know, comics are supposed to be fun. And that's mm -hmm. really what this is all about. Speaking of fun, I, I love segues. Sorry. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Speaking of fun, uh, Marvel's First Family. Yep, the Fantastic Four the Fantastic coming back. Four, yep. Like literally, like they are like the the base for the Marvel universe. Yeah. Like I mean, like a lot of the themes, a lot of the things that like define like Marvel. Yeah, 1961, kind of where the Marvel world. Age all started. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, what can you tell us about that? I know Sarah Pichelli. Yep. And it's Dan Slott. Dan Slott. But uh, what else can you tell us about it? Some of it's shrouded in mystery. But I want to like get at least like a nice little overview. Yeah, you know, uh, at the end of Secret Wars, Jonathan Hickman left Reed and Sue and the two kids, Valeria and Franklin, kind of out yeah. on their own. Uh, the rest of the Marvel Universe thinks they're dead. Right. And Chip Zdarsky in Marvel 2 and 1 has been doing a fantastic job yeah. of Ben and Johnny mm -hmm. going out there and trying to find where they are. If they are alive, where can they be? Mm -hmm. It was a perfect segue when we started about what we can do next, how we can keep this whole kind of... Uh, progression that we're, we have with the new series, new directions, new creative teams going was naturally bring back the Fantastic Four felt yeah. perfect. Dan Slott pitched this, this idea. We knew he was the guy. And Sarah Pichelli with her you know, natural ability to draw not just huge scale Marvel superheroes, mm -hmm. but kind of those just real character moments. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. it's storytelling sometimes it's just about the wink of an eye or the, 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 the bend of a smile, mm -hmm. more so than these big action kind of set pieces that some artists draw. And Sarah was the perfect uh, artist for it. And uh, I don't want to give away too much, you know, but the, the first family, as you put it, uh, yeah. will be reunited. And as much as people expect a book called The Fantastic Four to focus on the fantastic, mm -hmm. as it has, so if they have the grandest of adventures in the Marvel Universe, this is a book that really will also focus on, as you said, the first family. And it's, you've, they've been separated for so long, there's going to be some, some anger, some anxiety, a lot of lingering questions, uh, why they didn't come back, why they weren't in contact. What's been going on, you know, the, them re readjusting to the Marvel Universe when in, they do get back, mm -hmm. and how Ben and Johnny are going to deal with almost having them feel a little bit betrayed, you know? Right, yeah. So it's going to be a real strong emotional core to the book, mm -hmm. but it won't be without its backdrop of the classic Fantastic Four characters and villains. No. And, uh,. You've probably seen it on the variant covers that have been out and that we've all been pushing, mm -hmm. but uh, those art gym yeah, covers are oh, gorgeous. Awesome, aren't they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And now, so, but any Fantastic Four character that has been on the Fantastic Four that fans have liked, mm -hmm. right. be it She-Hulk, be it yeah. Ghost Rider, you know, yeah. be it Black Panther, yeah. they will be in the Fantastic Four. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. So you all, okay, so Marvel, the Marvel, the larger umbrella, yep. has a major movie coming out next year, yep. or two actually, Yeah. Um, one of them being Captain Marvel, Yes. and you guys have the life of Captain Marvel yeah. coming up around the corner, mm -hmm. and lastly, because this has been a breathless interview, uh -huh. <laughs> and thank you for doing this, no, my problem, but my like, uh, what can you tell us about the life of Captain Marvel? What is in store for the life of Captain Marvel? You know, uh, the life of Captain Marvel is kind of going back and looking at Carol Danvers' history, as it's such a convoluted history, mm -hmm. and kind of putting it in order and making sense of it. Right. It's like looking at the pieces of our history we didn't we haven't seen and dance between the raindrops mm -hmm. and that's what we try to do with a lot of these series um, you know especially when movies are coming out because uh, you know we all know that Marvel Comics 
Marvel, we started at comics and built to Marvel Studios. Right. But for so many people, the movies are the first kind of step into yeah. the comic book world yeah. these days, the Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. So what we want to do is we want to make sure that when people leave the movie theaters, they know that the Marvel story continues 365, 24-7. Mm -hmm. That they could go to their local comic shop and they can get comics that continue the adventures. They can get action figures and create their own adventures. They can get merchandise to show their love of the characters. You know, anything you need is at their fingertips to just, once you leave the theaters, the story continues. Yeah. And that's kind of what Captain, the life of Captain Marvel is, but we're doing it almost a little bit ahead of time, so the trade is out in time for the movie. Right. So people who leave the theater knowing Captain Marvel, the first female-led movie mm -hmm. to, you know, for, for a Marvel hero, mm -hmm. uh, to leave the theater, go right to the comic shop and pick up a one-stop shop where they can find out who Captain Marvel is, who Carol Danvers is, and learn more about her as they're going to see her on the big screen. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much, CB. I appreciate no, it. Troy, thank you. Thank it's, you for shouting out pleasure. Comic Shops. No, it's awesome. I appreciate it. They're our lifeblood. So, you know, nothing but love for our retailers. And, you know, Marvel's here for everybody. Awesome. Guys, this is San Diego Comic-Con. CB Sobolski. You know, check out Marvel, of course, available at comic shops everywhere. And uh, we'll see you around. Previews World, would you like to win a copy of next month's Previews Catalog? Comment below with your favorite Marvel character and one lucky winner will receive a free copy of the upcoming Previews Catalog.